Here in Liverpool, this coming Friday, I threw a tweet out about it. Sorry, an X out about it uh, at the weekend. <clears throat> Excuse me. And lots of you said, oh, I've already got me tickets, already got me tickets and can't wait. Uh, I've been talking to James, James Graham, all about it. Uh, black stuff from screen to stage. New drama this autumn on BBC Two includes Boys from the Black Stuff, the former gang of tarmac layers now among the Liverpool unemployed. Hey, what now? What chances have you got of leaving school with any qualifications if you're never there in the first place? Qualifications? Well, what's wrong with qualifications? You need nuclear physics to be a bit man these days, Dad. It's been an absolute thrill to finally get it up on its on its feet and and to be in a room with this great company of actors and 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 for me personally to be working as a writer alongside Alan Bleasdale, who comes into the room every day and we work on the script, his script with his iconic Liverpoolian characters. It's just, it's extraordinary. And um, yeah, there does actually come a point when, you know, you rehearse and rehearse, but eventually you have to put it in front of an audience. So even though that's yeah. terrifying, it's also really exciting because that's when you, that's when you learn the most about your, about your show, the audience teaches you what you've got. They are characters. They are fictional characters. But I remember the impact that this had when it was on the television. And we knew those characters. We knew the Chrissy Todds. We knew the Yozers. You know, we knew the Dixie Deans because they lived in our community and went through similar situation in a desperate city at a desperate time. Yeah. And I guess what's either what's either great for the show or really depressing for the show is you know i feel like we are living through similar a similar mood a similar time now it's not exactly the same in its character um you know as you as you say you know that that period in the early 80s um was defined by its its unemployment and i guess we're living through a, a different kind of crisis now aren't we we actually have an employment crisis where people are in work but still suffering from from poverty there's still a feeling of pessimism about the direction of community there's you know the whole the whole empty promises of, of leveling up still these parts of the world. And I, I come from a similar community in, in Nottingham where we did a BBC drama last year called Sherwood, which was pretty much inspired by Alan and his work on, on black stuff. So yeah, that, you know, these characters, they just captured it, didn't they? They captured what it felt like on a human level to, to experience those social and economic um, problems and, and, that, and that tragedy and, I think both Alan and I are very aware that an audience will feel like they're meeting these characters again, mm. but they also obviously have to be brand new. They have to be fresh. We've got new actors playing them. They have to be alive for 2023. And it's that balance, isn't it? The balance of giving, reminding people what was so iconic and, as you say, so resonant about them, but them feeling fresh and, and alive and new on stage. I've got no money. Oh, well, I mean... That explains everything. Yeah, and I'm having a hard time with the HP. You send the stuff back then? I would if I could, but I've sold most of it already. Here I am, a man. <laughs> a man. A man with no job. Looking for one. I'm not trying to find a Scarlet Pimpernel. Is it, is it true to that TV series or is it in the now? Some people have two jobs and still can't make ends meet. It's not an unemployment thing. It's an employment thing. Zero hours contract, cost of living crisis. Are, are we in the now with this? It's very much still set in the 1980s. And actually what um, what, what strangely has happened, actually, is it, it, in a, an odd kind of way, it's kind of become a metaphor as a result. You know, it's 40 years ago. And if you think of most of the great theatre plays, whether it's Shakespeare or ancient Greek plays, weirdly that distance, the fact that it's a history play now, Make, take it takes on this extra level of poetry. If I was being really pretentious, it oh. takes on an extra level of metaphor because you sort of go, God, we're just trapped in these cycles, aren't we? That we never get out of. We we were always going to be struggling. We're always going to have to be fighting and reminding uh, people, government, and individuals of the value of of community and of investment and and giving people hope. So yeah, we we decided to very much keep it in in 1982, oh. the year of my birth, um, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, yeah, so I'm as old as boys from the black sort of thing. It's um, uh, yeah, but it's uh, yes. I think the the like you say the 
the, the experience that the characters are going through, even though it's set in the past, will very much touch a nerve with an audience. But also, as you'll remember, Tony, like it's also a massive laugh. Like oh. it's so funny, Alice. Yeah. Like I turn a phrase, whether it's you know all that iconic gizzard job stuff or any of the characters, it's it's shake hands and everything else. It's really, really funny. So even though it deals with some pretty tough times, we want to give the audience a laugh as well. Yes, hello. Excuse me, would you like to start your confession now? Thank you. You do require confession, my son. Do you want to talk to me? Just talk. You tell me. Whatever you want, you tell me. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm going to use. There's, there's no need to tell me. I'm a desperate father. Can be a desperate world at times, Mr. Hughes. Yossi Hughes. Well, it can be a desperate world at times, Yossi Hughes. I'm Father Thomas. <laughs> Doubting for short. Daniel Thomas. I'm here to help you, Yossi Hughes. Daniel, don't worry about the father. I'm desperate father. Call me Dan. Dan. I'm desperate, Dan. But that's the genius of Alan Bleasdale, isn't it? You know, he yeah. will he will take you on a on a journey where you think I am at the depths of despair. And then within seconds in the same scene you're holding your sides with laughter and i think that's that's very alan bleasdale and 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 that's a gift that i think many writers would uh, would love to have and i've tried to learn that as well when i you know i i, I became a writer but don't tell him this but i basically <laughs> became a writer with alan bleasdale uh, watching those dramas growing up and the making sense of my my community I, I grew up in a mining town where all the mines were closing when i was um, just became a teenager and just looking around at that despair. And I, it's that, yeah, it's that gallows humour because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. The, absurd, the absurdity of the situations that you sometimes get put in, you just end up laughing because it's what else is, what else is there to do? And I think Alan's, that's what surprised an entire nature, nation watching this, this radical drama in 40 years ago is they expected something unrelentlessly bleak, grim up north, oh God, they, they're so miserable up there. And he just he just wowed people by these characters' humour, but also their eloquence, their poetry, their ability to express themselves and express the world around them. It's 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 incredible stuff. And we're so lucky to have it and still to be sort of using it to make sense of the world around us today. Take a look around you, girl. We form the majority round here. Only some fellas are lucky enough to have wives who recognise that fact. All right. I can take it, you know, Logo. I can take it, because I know my beliefs are right. I've been brought up by my dad to support what's worth support. Yeah? I didn't know your dad followed Everton. I do feel that, not just on its own, obviously, but certainly black stuff played a part in the Renaissance of of Liverpool with other things that came together and the city that we see now I firmly believe that the, the that that powerful writing and the millions of people who watch that once a week when it was broadcast on on television I genuinely believe that that played a part in the Liverpool that we see today I think you're bang on and I I'm so glad you said that actually because I, I like what is what is sort of politics except narratives it's always just narratives and, and the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves and what i what our country is uh, and and of course when when someone so beautifully and truthfully and honestly as alan tells the story on the ground from his community or be it through art and character that cuts through that cut through people it cut through the news it cut through it arrived on the desk of politicians and and then weirdly art becomes life, doesn't it? You start to contribute to the reality of the situation around you. And I agree with you. I think if, you know, everyone talks about levelling up, don't they? And and it's always to do with infrastructure and trams and statues and whatever else. I don't know why we don't talk more in terms of storytelling and how do you empower local people, local artists, local anybody to to, to have a voice and to capture what the situation is on the uh, that they're experiencing and that be part of the... The, the way that you you find solutions and answers and I would love to see so much more of that leveling up funding going into 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 theatres and art and schools mm. and storytelling and and how we give voice to our situation and you're right like I think black stuff changed an entire country's understanding and appreciation 
of the human cost of what was happening. How difficult or easy was it for you to sit down with Alan Bleasdale and say, well, look, this is this is your body of work. This is the, the TV drama, if, if you like. Moving that to, to the stage and, and tweaking things as well, because I know some, some writers can, can be, and rightly so, can be protective of, of you know, their work. Was it difficult to say, I think this might work in this way, Alan? <laughs> you know, almost like, you know, yeah. Obi-Wan Kenobi and, and Luke Skywalker. You know, you're the master and you're, you're <laughs> you know, was it, did it feel a little bit like that? Yeah, of course. But thankfully, it was it was made much easier by Alan just being an absolute dream. Like he, he has he's, he was so generous in his handing it over to me a bit like you say, like the lightsaber coming into my hand and me going, oh, my God, don't drop it. Don't break it. <laughs> but he's his generosity because he un, he understood that it obviously it has to be a different thing. You can have the characters and their their world and their story. But, you know, the TV show is six hours long and seven hours when you include the original play for today. So you have to make choices about what you keep. And also if you remember the original TV show, it was almost like an anthology. So there's each episode followed one particular character Correct. and then you moved on to the next. So Dick Dixie had his story, Yozer had his story. And I think a play has to be more of a cohesive whole. It has to be the whole ensemble all together all the time to experience in one evening. So we, we've had to be quite, Radical, but in lit, like I felt hopefully though, his generosity was met by my humility if I had it, which was to go, come on this journey with me. I need you to guide me through this stuff. Mm -hmm. And we worked together and it was really great. And I, I think he's really proud of what we've got as a, as a two hour play. And, uh, and we'll see what the audience think now. James Graham. Writer of the, uh, well, hit BBC series Sherwood. He's done all kinds of things. Black Stuff is his project now. And it opens on Friday. And as you told me on social media, uh, when I, I posted that I was going to be talking to James, he said, oh, I've got to, we've got tickets. There's not many left. There's not many left. Uh, but he wants to take it around the country uh, as well. It's really nice to uh, talk to James. And uh, some of the bits that you didn't hear in that interview, he was just, uh, he said, he said I, I, was like, I was like an, an excited little boy. I was like a fan, you know, working with Alan Bleasdale, you know, who doesn't give many interviews now. And he's not going to let his work be, be used in the wrong way. So he's given it the blessing as well. And, uh, yep, it's going to be on at the, uh, at the Royal Court. So if you fancy going to see that, uh, as my lad is going to go, keep saying, watch the TV show before you go and see it. And, uh, yeah, get in touch with the Royal Court and they'll give you all the details. Uh, good afternoon to you. Tony Snell. BBC.